that is burning within my bones. Mm -hmm. Amen. And this is a word that I did not come up with. The Lord implanted it within me. And how did, how did this happen? It happened through faith. By hearing the word of God. And that is going to be what I'm going to talk about today. Is our faith through the same way Abraham's faith came to him. Mm -hmm. God, God came to Abraham, told him to leave his country, and he did. That's where the belief started. That's where the faith started. I got to start with my notes now. I'm going to hit myself. We've heard many, many wonderful things this weekend of the circumcision. And it seems like everything that we've heard is going to compile. I could just sit down right now. Because everything is going to compile into what my message is. And my topic rests upon the evidences. Upon the evidences of a righteous life in the scriptures. And it is by those evidences that we are assured of our righteousness through believing, through our faith. So we're going to look at some of the evidences we see. We're going to look through the Word of God and what they say about our righteousness. My scripture today, as Brother Robert, Brother Robert finished up, is mm -hmm. Romans 4, 23 through 25. Now it was not written for his sake alone mm -hmm. that it was imputed to him. But for us also. Mm -hmm. So we are brought into this imputation, so to say. This imputed righteousness. Yeah. We're brought in. If. There's a big if right here. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Who was delivered for our offenses. And was raised again for our justification. The two big words in that statement is, if we believe. We have to believe in what the Word says in order for us to receive the faith, in order for us to be, for, for, for righteousness to be imputed unto us. We have got to believe on Him who raised up Jesus from the dead. As we have read, that the things that were written of Abraham was not only for His sake alone, but it was for us also, so that we can partake of the righteousness that is by faith. The same righteousness that was imputed under Abraham, unto Abraham. We've heard that more and more times today. The same thing, the same faith, the same righteousness that Abraham had, we have. Because why? We believe in the same God. Yeah. Yeah. We believe in the same God. And, the, and, and God... He does not waver, and there is no shadow of turning in him, is there? The same thing he said in the beginning is the same thing he's going to say in the end. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We can take that to the bank. And that's what we rest. That will, is what we rest our beliefs on. This was not an exclusive covenant between God and Abraham, was it? God told Abraham that through his seed, all nations would be blessed. Amen. This Amen. covenant went out to the whole of the nations, and it was not bound by borders, was not bound by ethic, ethnics, people, or even time. It is reaching to even you and me. Amen. And it is even reaching farther past us in our seed and the seed's seed. It will never hit his, his well, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, his covenant will never cease. We can count on that. The promise is to all those who will. Mm -hmm. This is one of the amazing aspects of God. That he is not a respecter of persons, is he? Mm -hmm. And his promises have gone, gone, gone out throughout the whole earth for those who will call upon his son. And this is all accomplished through faith in his son. Not through the works of the law, 
nor through the circumcision made with hands, mm -hmm. or through an earthly high priest, nor is it accomplished in Jerusalem, but through the faith that we receive by hearing the word of God. And it is through the word of God that we know that God is a rewarder of those who mm -hmm. diligently seek him. Yeah. Why are we going to seek him? Because we've heard that he is good. Mm -hmm. Because we've heard that he has something for those who he loves. I'm going to ask a question. Who in this room remembers seeing Noah's heart? Any hands? Okay. Or how about the brazen serpent that was on top of the pole? Anybody remember that? Or even the tabernacle? Okay, let's not go so far back. Who remembers seeing in the news the account of John being exiled on the, on the Isle of Patmos? Anybody here? Okay, here's another question. Who believes these accounts? Let me see hands. Okay. Okay. How do we believe him? Why do we believe him? Mm -hmm. It is through faith. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is through faith. This is the point of the message. We believe because we have heard the word of God and have kept it within our hearts. It is written that by two or three witnesses that every word shall be established. How many witnesses do we have here in the Word of God? We have a whole book of witnesses. It witnesses every precept, every jot and tittle of God's abundant nature and His goodness. It proclaims the goodness of God upon those who trust in His name. And it condemns and judges those who are at enmity with Him. All through the word of God, we see witnesses of God and the memorials and the tokens that are set before the people of God to remind them of the promises of God. Things come to mind that was placed, a, a bow. A bow was placed in the sky, wasn't it? As a covenant that no more should God destroy the earth with water again. Well, it hasn't happened, has it? Do we, see, do we still see the bow in the air, in the sky? It hasn't happened. And I'm pretty confident, I'm very confident, that it isn't going to happen either. Why? Because God said it. Mm -hmm. We have faithful Abraham, who was told by God to count the stars of the sky, or the sands of the sea, for the number of his descendants. I can just imagine, I think Brother Larry brought it up yesterday, I can just imagine through Abraham's wanderings at night, he looked up and sees the stars. Or throughout the day, he looks down and he sees the sand. What do you think he was remembering when he saw those stars, when he seen those, that sand? Now, us, how many of you, I know I have, how many of you has looked up into the night sky and brought to remembrance the promise that God gave to Abraham? You might have even tried to count the stars. I have done that because my focus. But still, these are memorials. These are tokens of God's goodness to those who he loves. How many times have we ourselves had? What about Uzzah? What about Uzzah? Remember, he studied an ark, didn't he? He was smitten. Mm -hmm. it, brought back, it brought back to mind of David. It brought back to the mind of David, of the law, didn't it? When Uzzah studied the ark, God smote him. God, or David, looked back in the law. And then... It brought back to mind of how they're supposed to transport the ark. Or even the simple task of picking up sticks on the Sabbath. This sounds pretty minor, but the example is to us that God, what God has said, 
is what he means. Mm -hmm. He will not defer. He will not go back on the promises that he has made. What has he promised? What he has promised, he is able to perform. Yeah. And that's the point yeah. that we're getting to today. Mm -hmm. Abraham believed in God and was accounted to him for righteousness. Mm -hmm. Why did he believe? Because God said it. Why do we believe? Because we have a book of witness. Mm -hmm. We have the faith that God has given us. All of these are examples we're giving for our learning. They were given for our understanding so that our faith in him would be strengthened. The spirit has not filled the scriptures. The spirit has not filled the scriptures with idle words mm -hmm. just to fill up the pages. These are the words of God himself. And every one of them are for our learning. Romans 15, 4 tells us. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Amen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take him out. You are but a youth. Who's keeping the sheep? Mocking David. What did David do? He brought back to remembrance that God delivered him out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, and he told Saul that this same God is going to deliver. This Philistine. This uncircumcised Philistine. He was looking back on what God had done for him. Mm -hmm. Does that sound like faith? Mm -hmm. Does that sound like faith to me? Does that sound like believing? Taking into account what God had done in the past mm -hmm. and bringing it to the future and seeing God was faithful back then at delivering him. 2 Timothy 3.14 tells us, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Mm -hmm. Now I know that these scriptures are very well known, but it is very good to bring these to remembrance mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. John, John verse 20, chapter 20 verse 31 tells us, but these, the scriptures, these miracles, the things that Jesus did, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Amen. And that believing ye might have life through his name. Mm -hmm. Amen. We must never grow weary of the word of God. Amen. Never. Mm -hmm. Through these words, by hearing the word of God, this is where faith comes from. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. Abraham heard the voice of God and he followed, didn't he? Mm -hmm. We can go to Romans 10, verse 14 and read. It says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe him in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Yeah. God was preaching to Abraham. Okay. How was Abraham to leave his land, leave his kindred without being called? How could he believe without God speaking to him? Someone brought it up earlier today. I think it might have been Brother Al brought it up and made me think about it. We never see this account of of Abraham believing before chapter 12, really, of Genesis, okay? But what we do know is that first meeting, so to say, the first words that God spoke to Abraham made such an impression on Abraham that he believed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we hear the word of God, 
it must make an impression on us. It changes our life. Amen. And through that believing, we too are going to leave mother. We're going to leave father. We are going to leave everything of this world. And we're going to take up our cross and follow Christ. Amen. If we've never heard, how are we to believe? God came to Abraham and told him to leave his family and kindred, kindred, kindred. God had promised him that through his seed all nations would be blessed. God spoke to him and he followed, even to the point of offering up his son. And through all of this, Abraham was called the friend of God. And because of his belief, righteousness was imputed to him. Not through circumcision of the flesh, but because of the circumcision of the heart. Genesis 12, 1 tells us, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show, you, show thee. That's it. That's all that was needed to be said. Mm -hmm. And what did he do? He departed. Mm -hmm. This was the first writer that talked about that. He went. He was, in essence, circumcised from amongst his people. He was cut off from the living that he once knew. This was, in reality, a circumcision of the heart. This is where Abraham was counted righteous before God. It was because he believed. This was 24 years before the token of the circumcision of the flesh was required. 24, almost a quarter of a century before. And we know he had to wait, he had to wait one more year for this promise to, to be fulfilled. So we can see that just as the bow is in the, in the sky as a token, the sands and the stars are memorials. Winter and summer are set as timetables of God's long suffering. And the creation is an evidence of God's power and glory. That the circumcision of the flesh is just a token to give Abraham an evidence of his belief in the covenant of God. Now we know that the creation, it, sh it displays God's glory. Amen. It displays the Godhead. It displays the power of God. But the word of God displays his son. Mm -hmm. It reveals his son. Amen. Amen. That's where it's at. We can, we can wander at the sky. We can wander at all the trees and all the beautiful things creation has. But it doesn't point us to Christ. God's word points us to Christ. Amen. It is just a fleshly proclamation, this uh, circumcision of the flesh. It is just a fleshly proclamation of believing God. And it is by no way the means of being made righteous. Just as the bow is not the means of God's covenant with Noah, is it? Mm -hmm. The bow has no power. Mm -hmm. The fleshly circumcision, it has no power. It's God. And we brought that up earlier today. Mm -hmm. It all goes back to God. It all goes back to God. Mm -hmm. Without God, Abraham is just a man. Mm -hmm. But with God, Abraham is faithful. It all goes back to what God has declared and promised, and it is by His power and through His Son, and the faith that we have in what God has said, that we too are made righteous. Mm -hmm. It is by this that we also are of the circumcision of the heart. We are cut off from this world, and we are seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 <clears throat> there was a time, there was this time, when the ruler sent and questioned Jesus on lawful tribute unto Caesar, mm -hmm. and Jesus asked him, whose image, whose image is on this coin? They, state, they stated that it was Caesar's. Mm -hmm. And he told them to give unto Caesar the things which are his, which are Caesar's, mm -hmm. and unto God the things that are God's. The evidence was the image. Mm -hmm. The evidence was the inscription on that coin. That which could be seen. We have the same evidence in the Word of God. 
It is, infall it is infallible to those who believe. And because one, and, and just because one has not faith does not make the promises null and void, mm -hmm. does it? Right. No. We have the inspired, the inscripted, we have God's image mm -hmm. in the Word of God. Jesus came and proclaimed things that had never been seen before. Mm -hmm. Amen. And Paul, Brother Brown brought it up. Mm -hmm. Paul came and proclaimed things that were never mm -hmm. seen before. Now, do we think that this was not for our benefit? Mm -hmm. No, this was for our benefit, mm -hmm. for us to believe. Mm -hmm. This is the evidence. Just as God spoke to Abraham, he is speaking to us by the same means by his word. Mm -hmm. His inscription, his image is on every page and is in every word of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So through the word of God, through our faith in the promises of God, we can confidently believe in our circumcision made without hands. Colossians 2, 11 says, In whom also ye are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him, through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. We can take that to heart. Mm -hmm. We can believe that we are truly circumcised, that through our baptism we are truly raised in newness. Life. Amen. Amen. Abraham wasn't a friend of God before he left Ur. Mm -hmm. It was only after he came out. We are risen with him. Through what? It is our faith in him. Through the operation of God. By what God has done. Mm -hmm. Not by what we have done. Mm -hmm. Remember, throw the tent. Hands off. Not by our works, lest we should boast. Mm -hmm. Not by our works, not by the circumcision of the hands in which we may boast, but through what is accomplished on the cross by God and through Christ. This is where righteousness is imputed unto us, through Christ and by our faith in him. Romans 4.9 tells us, Cometh this blessedness mm -hmm. <clears throat> all through Brother, Brother Robert did this very well. All through Romans chapter 4, you could just read Romans chapter 4. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a lengthy message in itself. Yeah, that's right. We're going to take some points out of Romans chapter 4. Cometh this a blessedness upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, mm -hmm. but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal, the righteousness of the faith, which he had. Yet being uncircumcised, he had the faith, yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, mm -hmm. though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. And that the father of circumcision to them, who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had been yet circumcised. Let's talk about steps. Mm -hmm. Steps a little while ago. Here's the steps we need to follow. The steps of, 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 of a faithful Abraham. Mm -hmm. And not walking after him as Abraham walked, but following who Abraham was following. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Romans 4.16 tells us, Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end. To the very end. Yeah. That's what this has taken us to. It's our, our faith has taken us to the end. Just as Abraham, when he was told to leave, he, he, he was told to go sacrifice Isaac. I'm not going to tell you. You just follow where I'm telling you. I'm just going to guide you. Okay? When you get out there, I'll tell you where that mountain is. Mm -hmm. What's amazing? Abraham rose up early that morning. Mm -hmm. He was ready. He had three days to think, to reckon, to ponder, for his strength to be, to, for his faith to be strengthened. And we can read what the conclusion of the matter is in Hebrews 11. 
he knew that God was even able to raise Isaac from the dead. That's what he reckoned. Mm -hmm. Because God told him that through Isaac, his seed. Romans, Romans 4.16. Therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Abraham had this, 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 this destination. The land. Okay. The children of Israel had this destination. Land flowing with milk and honey. All through the scripture we see destinations. We see the hope that is set before. And I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to do it. But we can go to Hebrews chapter 11. And see what they were truly. What the, at the time they were just searching for land. They were just walking around for lands. God promised them this. God pr promised them earthly possessions. But we can see in Hebrews chapter 11 what, they, what the Spirit revealed that they truly were searching after. They were seeking after a country. They were seeking after a city whose builder and maker is God. Amen. That's the reality of it. That's where our faith takes us. That is the end of the matter. That we too... And I'm getting way ahead of myself. We too are searching for that same city. Yes. Mm -hmm. This whole chapter of Romans 4 speaks of the faith that Abraham had. And it is through that faith that righteousness was imputed unto him. And through all of this, we too are assured of the same. Because it was not written for his sake alone. Mm -hmm. But for all who believe. How was it that Abraham staggered not at the promises of God? How is it that he was fully persuaded that what God had promised he was able to perform? And how, how in the deadness of Sarah's womb in her old age did she deliver the promised child? It was all because their faith was not weak. Mm -hmm. In fact, it is recorded in Hebrews chapter 11 that Abraham accounted that God was able to raise up Isaac even from the dead so that his promise would be fulfilled. Their faith was strong because they believed. Everything that God has promised to us rests upon our faith in him because if only in this life we have hope in Christ, uh -huh. then we are of all men most miserable. That's right. All, all of our faith rests upon what God has said and what is going to come to pass. Just as Abraham's faith took him to places in which God would reveal, just as Joshua and Caleb's faith enabled and strengthened them to go and possess the promised land, the land that God would give, and just as the promises of God to us must be mixed with faith, or we too shall fall in the wilderness. Won't we? Yes. Mm -hmm. If the promises of God, if the gospel was preached, if the gospel is preached to us and it's not mixed with faith, then we too are going to fall. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember? Yes. Let's remember. Let's remember what the scriptures say. Yes. All of these people who receive the things promised to them of God, they have been circumcised without hands, haven't they? They were circumcised from amongst the people. Two! Two out of a couple million that came out of Egypt. That's circumcised from amongst the people. That's separated. Two that went in with the twelve to spy out the land. They came back. They had a good report. Righteousness was imputed unto them, and they believed in what God had said. If Abraham did not believe, then he, then he would not have received. And if we do not believe, neither we will receive. We can go to Joshua. Brings in mind a, uh, 
a, a, a lady named Rahab in Joshua 2.11. I, I thought about this a little while ago. Joshua 2.11 tells us, And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about what God did in Egypt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Mm -hmm. Now, Rahab was not old enough to know these things. She heard, didn't she? Mm -hmm. Now, what does the scripture reveal about, about Rahab in Hebrews 11? By faith, the harlot Rahab mm -hmm. perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. Yeah. Why was Rahab spared mm -hmm. in her faith in that she heard what God had did, had done? Mm -hmm. That's why she was spared. Why are we going to spare? Why are we not going to perish? Because of our faith in what God has said. Mm -hmm. That he has raised us up. And it is through his son. Mm -hmm. I have heard people state that they would have liked to have lived in the time of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm here to tell you, to tell them, that they are living in the time of Christ, right now. Mm -hmm. He is mediating. Right. He is at the Amen. right hand of God, yeah. interceding for each and every one of us. Amen. Yeah. 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 And at this present time, He is making His abode in every one of us. Mm -hmm. Those who through faith believe the witness of God. This was all made possible by his leaving the earth and sending the comforter. And through the promise to Abraham was that all nations would be blessed, blessed through his seed. The Apostle Paul reveals that the seed mentioned is Christ. And that we are all the children of Abraham through faith. Mm -hmm. So we see that the Spirit reveals to us these truths reveals to us these hidden mysteries that were once not known, but now are made known. The Spirit will now each, now we are all living in the time of Christ, in each and every one He abides. And in Acts it is written that it was not a justification through the law of Moses, does it? Acts 13, 38. This is going back to trying to with hands. Be it known you that be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things, are justified from all things, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. The sound went out. The sound went out to all the nations. And the remission of sins were to those who repented and, bapt and were baptized. And in order for the repentance, in order for the baptism, baptism to take effect, you must believe. Acts 2.38 tells us, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. For the promise, for the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, mm -hmm. even as many as the Lord our God, our God shall call. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Remember, for the promises are to you. What promises? The promises that we can go back and look mm -hmm. and see what God has said. We must call. We must call to remembrance. Mm -hmm. 
We must call to remembrance the former days mm -hmm. in which, after ye were illuminated, mm -hmm. the things were revealed to you, you understood. After ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of affliction. Then we go down, go down to 35. In order that we can cast not away, therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense mm -hmm. for reward. When we remember the former times, when we remember what God's promises were, then we do not have to cast away our confidence. Why? Because our confidence is not in what we have done, but in what He has said, what He has accomplished, what was done, and what is to come. And with that confidence, we can expect a great recompense mm -hmm. of reward. Mm -hmm. At one time, we were all without Christ. We were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now, I love the but nows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now, in Christ Jesus, ye who, were sometime, who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. When I see those but gods, it, it reminds me that we, we come to a point where man can't, where, where men cannot do it. Mm -hmm. We cannot accomplish the things of God. No amount of circumcision is going to make us righteous. But then here comes the work, but God. Then here comes God. He steps up and he reveals to us. Are you done trying? Are you done trying? Now accept my son. Accept my gift. We are not made nigh by the circumcision of the flesh, just as Abraham's righteousness was not imputed to him through his works. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall be no flesh justified in his sight. These are all for our learning and our faith. Jesus asked his disciples, Whom do men <clears throat> say that I am? And Peter answered, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus commended him and said that it was not by flesh and blood that this was revealed, but it was by my Father which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. The knowledge of Jesus Christ does not come from natural learning because the natural man cannot receive the things of God. It has got to be given to us by God himself. Mm -hmm. Just as it was given to Abraham to leave your kindred, leave your land. And then when it's revealed to us, God imputes us with righteousness. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts mm -hmm. to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's how it's revealed to us. Yes. God shines his light on our hearts mm -hmm. to reveal Christ. Mm -hmm. It must be revealed to us who Christ is, and we must believe on him that raised up Jesus Christ our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised for our justification. We, with our earthly eyes, did not see the resurrection of Christ, have we? But we believe and we are confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in us will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This all comes from God. Mm -hmm. It comes from God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Just as I've spoken a little before, God has given evidences in the lives of the saints of their faith in behalf of Him. Genesis 12, 1. This is Abraham. Now the Lord had said, get, said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house and unto a land that I will show you. There are some promises there. Verse 4. So Abraham departed. Yeah. Just as the Lord had spoken unto him. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. The Lord said it. Abraham did it. Mm -hmm. So Abraham departed. This was the evidence that he believed God. The evidence of the circumcision of the heart. And just as evident as Abraham's life of, of him being cut off from the world... We too have the same evidence in our lives. 1 Timothy 1.12 tells us, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me 
Christ Jesus our Lord has enabled me mm -hmm. for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. We were all blasphemers at one time. We were all apart from God. But now, but now because of God's grace, because of his mercy, now we are called the children of God. Is there anyone here who, ha who, who is the same as before they came to know Christ? Anybody? Anybody here? No, there isn't. Is there anyone here who is not a new creature? Who is not set apart? Who is not sanctified? Is there anyone here whose life was not changed, has not been changed because of Christ? Is there anyone here who does not love the disciples? What I'm getting at is this is an evident token that we are the children of God. Mm -hmm. This is the evidence that we have. That we can see with these eyes, with the eyes of flesh. This evidence is the, is the circumcision of the heart. People may have the circumcision of the flesh, but they do not love the disciples. They do not even love God. But it is only those who have been circumcised with the circumcision made without hands are able to love the disciples. That they are the only ones that are able to love God and keep his commandments. So do we see this mm -hmm. distinction? Mm -hmm. The true circumcision goes much deeper. It goes much deeper than the flesh. It gets down into the joints. It gets down to the marrow and the soul of the believer. And after that, a new creature is born from the waters of baptism. One who is cut off from the world's desires and wants. And they have been given a new heart one that is only after the desires of God. If this is not evident in a person's life, then their faith must be questioned. Because your life is a manifestation or an evidence of your faith. We have talked a lot about faith, and we know how the scriptures describe faith. We've heard it a couple times. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Through faith, we understand that the world was framed by God, mm -hmm. by the word of God, so that things which are seen were made not with, the, which, with so the, that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Mm -hmm. The substance or reality of things hoped for, the evidence or proof of things not seen. We can read that Abraham had this faith. God promised and Abraham believed. None of us were around when the world was formed. But through faith we know that the things seen, they were made from things unseen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have faith that God spoke the word. Mm -hmm. He spoke the word and things were created. Mm -hmm. You know what? This faith must be so deep. It must be so great unto us. In, inside us that we can embrace it that we can lay a hold of it that's the substance of it that we lay hold of it that we're persuaded by it faith does not rely on human senses it does not rely on the wisdom it does not rely on man's wisdom of God and in fact, it truly rests with the faith of a child. We are confident that, we, that when we read what is in the scriptures, that they were written by the Spirit through the pens of men. We have to be confident. We have to have faith in that. We are assured through faith that what God has promised, He is able to perform. We must not stagger out the promises of God, but lay hold of them and be persuaded of them. 
because without faith is it, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe. They, he must believe that he is. Mm -hmm. That he is. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We have to believe that. Mm -hmm. God has placed the promises before us just as he did for Abraham and all those who have come before and all of those who have who are going to come. And God has revealed to us the glory that awaits those who overcome. And we place our hope in the one day that we will see him face to face. Mm -hmm. God has told us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Mm -hmm. We can read that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Just as I said, there is no shadow of turning in him. He does not waver. He's not going to change his mind halfway through. Mm -hmm. Brethren, Abraham believed God and it was imputed to him for righteousness. Mm -hmm. And I too believe the same promises. The same promises that are revealed. These promises, and I started on this a little earlier. These promises that are set before us, they're, they're afar off. We can see them afar off. Let's read some of these. Hebrews 11:8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. He was trusting in the word of God. Hebrews 11.10 For he looked, he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Down to 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And verse 16, but now they desire a better country that is in heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you see this? Do you see where the faith that God has given us, where the promises that God has told us, do you see where they are directing us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To this city. Mm -hmm. And now we too are desiring this same city. Mm -hmm. I desire the same things. And I have seen them. I have seen them afar off. And have been persuaded of them. And I have embraced them. Mm -hmm. These promises are the evidence of God's righteous, of God's goodness to his people. And they were not written for their sakes alone, mm -hmm. but for ours also, whose faith is in the one to come. Mm -hmm. For all the promises of God are in him, are yea, mm -hmm. and in him, amen. amen. Mm -hmm. Do we see this? Mm -hmm. All the promises of God. I was, I was telling somebody the other day, I see four great points in this whole creation of God. God created the world. Man fell. Christ died. And Christ is going to return. But you know what? Every one of them points are all in Christ. Mm -hmm. For the things were created by him, through him, and for him. Mm -hmm. He is the seed that was going to bruise Satan's head. Mm -hmm. He is the one who is the perfect sacrifice for us. And he's the one that's going to come back. Everything that God has said is wrapped up in Christ. And in closing, our faith is our faith. Our faith is based upon the things that God has revealed to us through his word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This is the witness of who God is. The heavens declare his glory and the creation reveals his power and Godhead. But the scriptures reveal Christ, as I said. Amen. It is they mm -hmm. that testify of me, Jesus Amen. said. There is no amount of cutting off the flesh that is going to bring us, that is going to make us more accepted in God than what Christ has done. Righteousness has, not, has been imputed to us through our faith in him and that alone. And our faith is based on what we hear, what we reveal, what, re what is revealed to us. And the greater our faith is, the more we believe. The more we believe, the greater our faith grows. The prophet Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, he saw the Lord high and lifted up. 
He saw himself as undone and a man of unclean lips, living among a people of unclean lips. But the Lord sent seraphim with a white pole and touched Isaiah's mouth. And Isaiah's iniquity was taken away, and his sin had been purged. And then, and only then, was Isaiah able to proclaim, Here I am, send me. But now, but now, we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Brethren, Christ is our live coal. It, is, it was evident in Isaiah's life that when his sins were purged, he was able to accomplish the things of God. He was able to approach God and say, Here I am, send me. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge our conscience from dead works to serve a living God? It was not written for his sake alone that righteousness was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, mm -hmm. who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. And one day, and one day, brethren, mm -hmm. in the end, the promise, <clears throat> the promise of God will be fulfilled in that we will be his people and God himself shall be with us mm -hmm. and he shall be our God.